Today's video will have spoilers for the end of The Rising Storm. I highly recommend not watching this until you've read the book, even if you weren't planning on reading it. It's that good. Okay, still here? Let's go. One of the stories the Project Luminous writers have told a couple times is about how Kevin Scott posed the question, what are the Jedi afraid of? That makes sense. Kevin is a big horror fan. When I spoke with him, we went on a big tangent about horror and scares in Star Wars. But that question got the ball rolling on a lot of ideas surrounding what the High Republic could be about. In the first wave of stories, we were introduced to the Nile and the Dringir, and I at least assumed that these beings scared the Jedi. And I think they do, to a degree. They're different kinds of enemies, they present unique challenges for the Jedi to deal with, but what's becoming more and more clear to me as I read these stories is that they are just the beginning. I also kinda thought the great disaster presented in Light of the Jedi would be the major event of Phase 1 of the High Republic, and Wave 2 has immediately shown me that I was completely wrong. It seems like every wave is going to have its own central event around which every story will revolve. For example, Wave 2 revolves around the Republic Fair. But Markeon Rowe's story also explores something completely different. He spends the first third of the story seeking out something. A relic, a creature, a sentient being, a physical yet spiritual entity. We're going to explore that today. It's still pretty ambiguous, and I think that's on purpose. Because frankly, there is fear in that ambiguity. But the point I'm getting at is that there is something new for the Jedi to fear at the end of the Rising Storm. Worse than the Nile, worse than the Dringir. The Great Disaster and all that was just the beginning. The attack on the Republic Fair is also still in the very early days of this era of storytelling. I don't know why I assumed the Nile and the Dringir would be the main antagonists of the entire story, the main cause of fear for the Jedi, because I don't think that anymore. They were just the tip of the iceberg, because now we've been introduced to something simply described as a horror beyond name or understanding, what Markeon Rowe describes as the leveler. And I think horror beyond name or understanding is what it's meant to be. Basically, fear personified. We see this thing in action twice in the book, each time it was weaponized against Force Sensitives. If I'm understanding it correctly, I think it just attacks people with their worst fears, at least to start. It invades their thoughts and overwhelms them with what they are most afraid of, basically ruining their balance and their connection with the Force. We get to see its attack on Belzettafar, and first he experiences a sudden sense of falling. The world just drops away from him, and he's falling without anyone to catch him, a fear we saw him having in Light of the Jedi. He reaches out in the Force, but it is also gone, and all he can do is scream while this fear continues to infest and cloud his mind. But wait, that's not all. The Leveler also attacks Loden Greatstorm. We don't see his mental experiences, but we do see the aftermath, and the attack was far more severe. And it's not only mental or spiritual, it petrifies him. I don't think it's an accident that what's described seems a lot like what Kane and Ezra and Ahsoka found on Malachor in Star Wars Rebels. Countless Jedi and Sith both turn to stone and dust that falls away when disturbed. That exact thing happens to Loden after he is attacked. And by the way, that's one of the reasons I'm trying to warn people not to come into these videos until reading this book. It's one of the most intense scenes I've ever read. I kept looking down at my Kindle and seeing I was 99% of the way through the book just begging the Force to let Loden and Bell live. And then on the last page, we see that Loden didn't survive. And the final four words of the book are, Stellan Gios was afraid. So, what are the Jedi afraid of? Not so much the Nile, not so much the Dringir, but the Leveler, whatever it is, this is the real deal. This is probably the actual start to the answer to Kevin Scott's question. And at this point, I'm not even expecting this to be the answer. Maybe one answer, but I think we're going to learn more and more about this thing and where it came from. Speaking of, all we really know is through Markeon's travels to find it. Buried in the ice of maybe his homeworld, at one point it had a temple and attendants and worshippers who gathered to feel, quote, its nullifying presence. The name The Leveler implies to me that it can level the playing field, so to speak. Basically cancel out the Force in someone. Not in the way that, like, a Salamiri could in Legends, but it cuts someone off from the Force through intense fear. That's my guess, anyway. Markeon brings a lightly Force-sensitive Nile into its presence, and he is also hit with that fear. One of the Leveler's attendants claims he is being cleansed by its power. That same attendant claims that the Leveler isn't a god, but is simply another aspect of balance in the universe. 
It also appears that Markion can control it with some of the artifacts we've seen him collect throughout other High Republic stories, the purple glowing thing from Light of the Jedi and something else he picks up in the High Republic Adventures comics. Combined, they seem to be able to send the leveler out or call it home. It does appear to be corporeal, because Roe mounts a camera to its back to see it in action. And that's all we know about it for now. It's very much shrouded in mystery, but I am both terrified and excited to learn more about it. I look forward to it showing up in the comics, so I can actually have some images to use while I talk about it. But yeah, whatever the leveler truly is, it's bad news that will likely wreak havoc on the Jedi Order. And I'm afraid myself for any Jedi it comes across next. I'm afraid for Bell and any lingering side effects he might have from the attack. But I also love what this means for the High Republic era. Just the idea that, so far at least, nothing is as it seems. The Nile are already a much smaller threat than we first assumed. They are scattered and dwindling in number, but they may have unleashed something far worse. And will the Leveler be the main problem of the era? Probably not. I bet it'll be another stepping stone to something even more terrible. But what do all of you think? Let me know your theories on the leveler in the comments. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel to keep up with all our High Republic coverage, follow us on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.